Hello. I hope I'm online right now. It took a little while to get on the... Oh, probably I am. <laughs> I got a lot of notifications on my side. A little bit late, I'm sorry. I will be doing the Sashiko live streaming again today. Um, if you have any questions about Sashiko, please leave the comments so I can probably answer that. I have some prepared materials to talk about first, so I'll talk about that. Um, after checking my situation right now. A week is so fast and long though. don't have my jeans that I was working on. Just a second. Seriously? This second, I really need some better setting, like equip equipments to do the live streaming. I do have only like one laptop I can use for that, so it's kind of difficult. Oh. All right, perfect. I am back on the camera. It is freezing here in Pennsylvania. I hope New York is okay. Um, I've heard that pretty big storm, snowstorm hit New York and that area. I hope everybody's okay there. At the same time, that means you can watch this live streaming. So if you happen to follow this from New York, it might be a good idea. It might be a good time to talk. I mean, good might might be a good time to join the workshop. Not a workshop. I'm sorry, the live streaming. Come to think of that workshop, I do have the workshop on April 21st and 22nd next month, about a month from now. And it's three hours workshop. You can learn everything about Sashiko, starting from how to use the needle, thimble, and thread, and kind of finish the project. It's a pretty intensive three hours. So that's a really good opportunity for you to learn and start and enjoy and review what Sashiko is. All right, so let's talk about the, I am not online, I, I am not using the video yet. I'm not ready to show my face yet. I can get you the very small one here. Oh. I'm kind of tired today, so I'll be... <laughs> I might not be a good streamer today, not a streamer, live broadcaster. Okay, um, I'll do a little bit of video. I there was a comment that I they wanted to know how to start the project and how to end the project. It really depends. The answer is pretty much it varies to. It really depends on what you want to do. But um, as one example, I can show you um, like a quick presentation of how to start and how to end the project. So here is one. Just let me check. Let me check it works. Um, it should. It worked before. Come on. Mm. 
A second okay it did work before come on need new saves probably should get this come on seriously So this is what we call cooking. It's a Japanese dishcloth. You, we usually use this cloth to wipe it or you know, do regular work. Um, it's like a simple square dishcloth. Um, I made this dishcloth within two hours, so it's not that big of project but it might be a good idea to just introduce how to start and how to end it. Um, just I will restart it. Japanese term for the dish cloth. Uh, we use this cloth for wiping the dishes and if you keep using them get dirty you might wipe we might wipe that and we might wipe the table or turn the table with this and after that we use it like, as a rag to wipe the floors or even like clean the toilet. Uh, so it's pretty Japanese traditional cloth. Um, that requires a lot of durability. Durability strong Strongest, strongness to be a good fabric. So many people do this cheaper stitching on this fabric. Um, many question is like where can, we, where can we get this fabric? I have never seen one fabric like that in the US. It's called Sarashi. Um, if I Google translate that, it's called like bleach cotton fabric. I do have some of the cotton fabrics that website well not yet i do have that in part if you want to be interested in part of the thing please contact me i do not set up the part yet but you can get it for me um, it's not that expensive it's not that expensive but it's pretty good experience it's pretty good practice material for chico stitch um, so and i do not have any pattern printed on it only because I wanted to practice how to transfer the patterns or how to draw the patterns in the fabric. I do have a several, in fact, many tutorials on my YouTube channel that explain how to transfer the fabric, how to even draw the fabric, how to find them on the fabric. So please use that. I even draw this pattern by myself with using the uh, washable pen. So it's a lot of explanation. To, ex to explain how to make a stitch, but let's say you know how to make stitches, you follow the kind of line, you follow the line to make these stitches, and you do kasane, which I explain in the different uh, videos, to hold the thread instead of making a knot, and then after making kasane, you can cut the leftover thread tails. Uh, this is both. This is the project which both sides should look good because there's no lining fabric and I don't I don't plan to put that fabric on it. So I I wanted to make kasane, I wanted to make even stitches on front side and back side. This is the front side we're looking at. We make stitches from the back side. We make patterns on the back side of the fabric and then starting this finishing it. But this, for this patterns, I mean, for this fabric, the both sides should look good. Um, like that. Oops. 
I'm sorry. I didn't realize that there was a video on. I'm sorry. Wow, I really kept talking without... I believe that it's easier for you to hear right now because I kind of cut off the clip, video clip, audio. Oopsie, oopsie. I'm sorry for that. I'll, I will explain that again. I will explain that again. Thank you for the comments, Susie. It was my bad. I thought I... So you heard nothing the last 10 minutes or so? Oopsie. Okay, I will redo everything, which I don't know if I can, but I'll, I'll do my best. So, okay. So the video you're watching right now is called... Oh, okay. You heard the most of it? Thank you. I'm sorry for that. But yeah, this is the skin cloth, dish cloth. We use both sides as the finished side. Um, this is... We Japanese use this fabric to wipe the dish after cleaning it. it when it gets dirty, we use to wipe the tables or the furniture, kitchen countertop. And after it gets really, really dirty, we wipe the floors. And after that, we even wipe the to toilet, those dirty areas. And we use it until the end. Until, like, it gets really, really rag. So it ha needs to have the stability. It has to have a strength. So that's why we perform with a lot of sashiko in this freaking fabric. And as I said, ooh, um, we do have, I do have this sashiko, I mean, sorry, I do have this fabric in stock and we provide a lot of patterns to transfer to or tutorials to transfer to and we provide the tutorials how to draw the patterns too. So please take a look at it. Um, please look at... How can I say? Look at the other channels. I mean, not a channel. Look at the other videos to start the project. It's not that difficult. Once you get a fabric, you transfer the fabric or you draw the patterns by yourself. The reason I want you to draw and, you know, I want you to learn how to make a patterns or draw the patterns instead of providing you the pre-printed or pre-draw pattern is that once you know how to use it, how to make, how to prepare the fabric, your Sashiko project will you will be unlimited. Um, if you purchase pre-printed patterns, that's the end, right? Like if you finish it, you have to buy the new one, but it's gonna be the same patterns or similar patterns. That's not what I prefer. I want you to enjoy with your freedom and imagination and stuff like that. So yeah, I want you to learn how to draw the patterns, prepare the fabric. Uh, what I'm doing right now, what was I doing right now, was to cut off the, all the tails of sashiko thread after making kasane. Kasane means overlay stitching. I explained that in different video, but in sashiko, we do not make a knot to stop the fabric to hold the thread. To hold the thread, we do not make a knot. Instead, we make overlay stitching like that kasane. Then, so that then we can we can view both of the Fucking both of the fabric looks much much better. All right, one last time I broadcast this video, and I'll, I'll move to the next one. <laughs> um, the goal is to. The goal of this cutting the tail is that. We can use both sides as the front side, so we cut the thread. I mean the tails as short as possible, almost like invisible. Huh. 
Oh, I took it a lot. You don't need anything fancy to transfer the fabric. I mean, transfer the pattern on the fabric. Um, you can use any like dressmaker, carbon paper, carbon sheet. You can use like a child washable markers, even like a color pencil. Um, we introduced like a best way, and in, in my understanding, I we introduced the good way we follow to transfer and to draw the fabric, but. I just I just want you to kind of have a freedom to enjoy the Sashiko project rather than just following the direction of a manufacturer made or you know I I really don't like those kit <laughs> especially those lines with dots to teach you to tell you how the stitch size should be you know what I mean like when I draw the line it's a solid line but in the market, you can see a lot of kits with the dot already printed. Can you hear me? Did I talk? Did you hear that about the patterns? 
come on, like, what is this going on? Do you... I talked about the patterns. Uh, the Susie's comment was, can you show the direction or the stitch patterns? Uh, my answer was, I can show you the example, one example next week for the asinhole patterns, but the, there's no such a thing as solid answers because each patterns are different. Um, even the same asinhole patterns depends on where you cut, where you use. Um, the direction can be orders can be different so what i can say is what i can show is one example based on one particular patterns but the most important core concept is to think of one direction uh, i mean not one one direction one stroke line you can use so when you have to change the thread when you have to cut the thread when you have to jump from line to line, which is a waste of thread and time and movement. Yeah, so when you do that, I, like Sashiko is the kind of beauty of not making a lot of waste. So when you think of the one stroke, you can avoid some uh, waste. So I will explain that next time uh, with the patterns. All right, I will talk about this thread a little bit. I hope you can hear that. Susie, I got it, I got it. But that pattern is also kind of... Oh yeah, I, I can show you, I'll show that later. Like, briefly. Okay, next is... There's, I, I do also join the Sashiko group on the Facebook and I saw a lot of question about a lot of discussion about Sashiko thread. So here's another video explaining what is the Sashiko thread and what it, what do I mean by a good Sashiko thread. I hope you can hear me and you hear nothing besides my voice. So I introduced this thread before, but this is the Sashiko thread we use. And those colors are dyed by natural um, dyes, such as logwood, uh, lac dye, uh, indigo, mountain peach, stuff like that. Those are beautiful colors. But the topic I want to talk about today is not a color. It's the thread materials. Thread material. Um, it is not actually a frost or like simple yarn. It is divided by... It, it, <laughs> can I say that? How can I say that? The thread is consisted by full thread, full thin embroidery frost twisted in an interesting way. I will just adjust that video. Come on. So I'm just trying to untie that, but can you see that they're full thread, full, full kind of thin frost or thread twisted in a unique way? This unique twist is something we call sashiko thread. The reason we have this twist is to make the beautiful stitches, like a rice grain stitch. Without this uh, twist, it doesn't really make a good stitch. And there are a lot of like there are many kinds of sashiko thread available in the market. The difference is one is the quality of cotton they use. The second difference is the kind of twistness of the thread. Some threads are twisted very strongly. Some twi some threads are not twisted as much. So you it is a good idea. It is a good idea to kind of play with the other fabric, I mean other thread as well. Uh, we love the thread from Koron, material, Koron manufacture. It's a very small manufacturer in Japan following the um, Japanese traditions. 
We've been using this thread for a long time and we're pretty happy about it. We tried the other manufacturer's thread, but we always come back and my mother dyes the thread from their like original thread. So we love, we use the, their manufacturer's thread and we make 99% uh, pretty much every every product with their thread so we're pretty happy about it they use the best as long as i know they use the best cotton available in the market so i i've never had any complaints about their quality like the sashiko thread quality so that's one thing we can kind of consider and the later of this video i explain the difference of the stitching with the using a different thread so I'll wait until that, but it might be a little bit costly comparing to the other Sashiko thread. But come to think about that, it's 145 meters per skein. 145 meter. It's a lot of stitching. If you want to do 145 meters stitching, it, that's going to take a long time. So it might not be a bad investment. So right now I'm trying to untie that. I really do not untie it unless I really have to do it because it's beautiful because it's twisted as they are. So and try to find the other um, sashiko thread and try to untwist it. You might see the difference too and you can find the best one you would like to use. Oh, there was one question. Can they, can we use this thread in the Sashiko machine? Answer, I do not know. Since I've never used it, but probably not. Probably not. So, if you plan to use the Sashiko thread on Sashiko machine, um, read the manual. That's pro They will probably specify that. And this is the sample of stitching I made really quick. Um, the top one, is the Koron Sashiko thread with the double threading. It's the double, so it's more like it's more thick and strong. The second line is the like a regular Sashiko stitching with the regular Sashiko Koron thread, which I like the best. The right now the pink pin is there. The third one is the I divided those four strands of Sashiko, I mean embroidered frock into two. To thinner the thread, which we can do that if you want to, and they made a stitching like that. Yeah, this is very rare case. Um, it is very rare, but if you plan to do sashiko stitching on the silk fabric, especially vintage silk fabric, the sashiko thread, cotton sashiko thread, might be too strong to do a sashiko stitching. So in that case, you might want to just split. If you have the thinner thread, that's also doable with that. But if you have only the sashiko thread, uh, it might be a good idea to split the thread into two. Like, let's say, four, the twist of two, I mean, twist of four embroidery frost, just divided by two, so it's going to be two of two strands. Yeah. And sometimes cotton can be too strong for some fabric. And uh, it, it's going to come back to the screen again. But the last one I used was the just machine, sewing machine thread, which is not probably the best choice for the sashiko stitching. Um, but nothing is wrong. Those all four or any kind of sashiko stitching is okay. It's good. But my point is sashiko stitching really requires you do a lot of work, right? Like, if you want to finish one work, it's going to take, let's say, at least a few hours to finish one project. If you're going to spend that much time on it, I just want to have the good result. And as long as I know the thread we use and thread we provide with thread, and the thread we introduce will bring you the best result. And I can answer the questions if you do not get the good result, because we know it, we use it every day. Uh, some sometimes I get a re I get a question about the thread I don't 
even know, or you don't even have used it before. I cannot give you the good answer for that. Um, I'm not a, probably a good person to answer that. So, um, just try to use that. Uh, I will. I guarantee that you will get a good stitching with those thread. So the last one, the, the bottom one, I used the machine stitching thread. No, I'm sorry, sewing machine thread. It looks okay, but at the same time, it doesn't look that good. In my in my opinion, so it's just opinion. It's the matter of opinion. All right. I will switch to the actual camera right now, so I can talk about the orders of. <laughs> I mean the direction of such making sashiko stitching on the asanho patterns. I mean with the fucking, with the fucking cloth fabric. All right. Just bye bye. Here we go. No, no. Hmm? Just a second. No. Oh, there we go. Hello! Ha! Huh. I talked a lot. Oh, how are we doing? Uh, uh. All right. So, this is the project I did, right? Um, I don't know if you can see that nicely. Let's hide this one here because the visual. So I, this is one example. It, really, this one is a little tricky patterns because I don't work on it every day, but what I usually do is go find the biggest, longest one stroke line. For example, this one, where did I start? I started here. Go this way. Make a corner. And come down. And if I make a full square, that well, you can make a, like a full edge if you want to. But I just decided to go this way this time. I decided to go this way and make a big diagonal line like this. Then I probably did like this, I forgot already, and then ended here. And after that I go probably this way and do like this. So the core is to avoid waste of thread, waste of work, try to be lazy. So a few things, I do not like kasane much, like kasane is a great technique but it's a lot of trouble to make. So I like to avoid it as much as possible. So when we make those sashiko stitching, we try to have like one stroke without making the intersection much. Of course, you have to make several kasanes no matter what, but that's kind of the key of uh, good sashiko stitching or fast sashiko stitching. And after that, we do little tiny triangle here. Since we do little tiny triangle like this much, I'm sorry, then this triangle, right? Not a triangle, diamond shape. And after that, we fill up the, those uh, vertical lines from your view. And because that vertical line is more like a filling the leftover thread, you see a lot of kasane when I do that. So at some point, you have to make a lot of kasane, but this is something I prefer to kind of 
procrastinate a lot of kasane at the end. So that's one one sample. This is not an answer. This is not the the universal answer how to make sashiko patterns. I mean, how to make asanoho patterns. But it can be a good reference for that. And after this, we preferably you wash first so that the fabric and thread will kind of nicely mush together. But after that, you just can simply cut this like this, and then the both of the side of the fabric will look beautiful. I am not hundred percent happy with the stitching this with this one because I used this sashiko. I mean, I used this project. I used this um, skin project to do a speed run. I mean, sashiko and speed run is kind of not good combination. Like speed run, like I. My goal was to finish this sashiko st st stitching within two hours in front of the camera while I broadcast in the Instagram for two hours. So I was rushed a little bit, not a little bit, I was <laughs> I was really much rushed. I was a little bit nervous. It's kind of stupid, not a stupid, it's kind of a silly reason that I did it. But I started offering the ja online workshop to Japanese people, which is like a test. I'm building the online workshop in English, but it is very difficult for me to communicate throughout the camera and do the same, same similar quality of workshop as I do in New York City face to face. So I'm trying to kind of practice how to communicate over the internet better. So I'm asking my friends in Japan to join the kind of online workshop, not a workshop, but online communication to teach or to show them how to make sashiko stitching and in that we use a lot of fucking fabric to practice not a we not a I they Japanese people like to work on the fucking fabric like this so they use a lot of those fabric for the practice and I show I, I was teaching them how to use this needle and symbol and at the end of the two hours, three hours of uh, online gathering, online video chat. One of the students said, like, how long is it going to take for me to do this patterns to fix, to complete one fucking fabric? And I said, well, probably two hours, possibly less than two hours. And they didn't believe that. They think it's going to take at least six hours, you know, four hours, six hours. And they said, well, 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 probably yes, probably the it's like, okay, let's see. Let's see if I can do that or not. So I did it with a speed run. So it's... The answer, the conclusion is that I can do it within two hours, but I can do better, more beautifully, more nicely if I have extra 30 minutes or so. Anyway, I hoped that was the kind of answer to your questions of directions. I will talk about how to do the directions a little more in the next video um, after that I'll just do the jeans denim stitching as always wow 45 minutes already I mean 30 almost 40 minutes um, I would probably have to go within 30 minutes or so. So if you have any questions, please leave the comment. I will talk about it next week. Yeah, the skin ends up, the skin cloth will end up as a rag, but it will start as like a dish cloth on the kitchen cabinet or on the fridge or something like that. Do you see it better?
We talked a lot. Probably some of you are bored already. All the auction is ditching now. Why do Japanese put the card in the doorway? That's a pretty good question. Well, we do not... Well, <laughs> I shouldn't be talking on behalf of the other Japanese, but in my understanding, we are the culture of shame. We follow the culture of shame. And showing the... Showing in showing the f scenery of inside of the house to the others, to public, is very against to that culture. We really, really like to avoid that using, like, showing the... Shows like, well, we kind of understand that inside of the house either materialistically, mentally, physically, psychologically, is pretty dirty, not clean. For example, I, we do not discuss about what's going on in the family much. So I guess those, no, I, guess, I guess you're talking about the cart and so-called noren, which Japanese put in the doorway. Um, I think that's for more like hiding the shame of the each families they kind of carries. Yeah, we have a lot of those cartons called Noren. Germans are thank you for the comments, Coco. Uh Germans are also very private. We need rather outside and share our home. Yes, um, that's probably cultural issues. Um, Japanese is also okay. Actually, Japanese are okay to have a guest in the house. But at the same time, there's a very, very strict boundaries, like physical boundaries, where you can go in and you shouldn't go in. And I guess the Noren is a kind of like a boundaries to indicate that this is something you kind of shouldn't go in or it should be hidden. So it's very much cultural thing. And I respect that. It was very difficult to kind of introduce Noren the carton, like doorway carton in the US market when I was representing my Sashiko brand. Yeah, it was not for those people. Again, Japanese is a culture. Japanese follow the culture of shame from when they're born. So did I. So we really do not enjoy sharing this shameness. I mean, not even enjoy. We are not good at it, so we don't really share that. Hide the mistake. Hide anything you kind of have in the. Like hide the. C R A P. Either it's materialistic or you know. Psychological. Just don't show that to the others. That's kind of the. Japanese culture, I'd say. Are you watching from German? Germany, Coco? Thank you so much. That is kind of fun. This is very fun. The channel or even the website is getting so international. Thank you so much for that. It is kind of a nice time for European people to watch because it's pretty... not late late, but it's like at night. I wish I can do the live streaming in nighttime at nighttime in the US, but 
since this is the only available time I have right now, so. So unlike the, um, the disclosed sashiko here, I do not plan to use to show the backside of the jeans to the others. That's why I keep those loops. I don't plan to cut it off. It's not designed to be cut. It. Uh, it's about 8 p.m. there. Awesome. It's a good time. It's a prime time. It's getting in the prime time. Uh, Susie's comment. I would think that the curtain would be longer to hide the mess, but usually they're only shoulder height. Um, that's a very good point because the reason I said the mess as the kind of materialistic and the physical, we are pretty clean people. Japanese are kind of clean people, so we do not have that much mess. So what they try to hide is the face not actual mess so we have i don't know if you have heard this word tatemae and honne japanese have a kind of two faces one is honne is a true feeling and tatemae is the faces you are supposed to make and that's considered as polite in the u.s probably not <laughs> but in in Japan, you should have those two faces, well, at least not, I don't know about right now, but at least when those culture was created, they were supposed to have the true feeling and, and like, come on, not a political, diplomatic, there we go, diplomatic face. So, those curtains are for the hiding those true faces in in contrast to the diplomatic face or fake face and that's why mo most of the cartons are pretty short and not to the that's why it's not a door door is too strong to avoid or to reject to ask, exclude the culture to the guest but <clears throat> those cartons are kind of open that they could technically see inside if they wish but the guests are also too shameful to look at it, to look into, like peek into the inside of the house, which is inside of the face, inside of the feeling. So house, like, I'm sorry, the house is the representation of their feeling, their mind, their emotions. And curtains are sort of the um, metaphor, met, met, metaphor of Putting a boundary between the <laughs> politeness and the actual feeling. Does it make sense? It is a polite stop. There we go. That's a very good way to... I like that sentence. <laughs> it probably is a polite stop. And, you know, we all... They, especially. We all need some break. So, <laughs> if you are invited to Japanese house. And if the host kind of went over the noren. Just don't follow after him or her. She might be doing a, like a scary face in front of mirror or something. I'm just kidding. But that's kind of the probably culture before the industrial revolution or something. So <laughs> polite, polite stop. It, it, it is, it is polite stop. But that's my understanding. It could be different. It could be, you know, it could be wrong. But I think it's not that wrong. I'm probably getting a okay point for that. 
I like flight stops for some reason. I mean, it is not a fault showing the bad face, more like it's the manner to not to show it, so it's for the guests too. You don't want to see the hostess like agonizing, ag agonizing face when you, they go to the bathroom. Well, th those are true too. Like, I think those Norin can be. Huh? The bathroom might be before af after Noran, which means they're trying to hide that place too. So it's more like materialistically speaking and spiritually talking. It's one of the stop. <laughs> At least it's not a political stop, it's the cultural thing. Yeah. Is the door design usually family crest or generic design? Mm. What is it my generic design? Generic. What is generic? Did, I don't. Are you talking about like traditionally or right now? Uh, if you're talking about two thousand, like contemporary Japanese door, it's the same as the U.S. or the other European cultures. They like IK is a pretty good furniture store in Japan too. So they use a lot of like contemporary designs. If you're talking about historically, like culturally, um. I don't think they designed the door specifically. It's like a universal design of shoji and hikido. It's not like a Japanese door doesn't open like the US door. It slides. Oh, the ja door curtain design. Mm. Door curtain design can be anything. Um, some people might put the you know family crest as you said. Uh, some people put their logos of stores to as a sign, but those like a with those with um, Japanese crest or specific design is more like the sign, like business sign or family sign, that it, this is like the sign you present to the outside that it, you exist. Same as like board or shop board or shop flag and I would say that's the same as those things those advertisement materials in 2018 um, the kind of like a polite polite stop I was talking about is more like a inside of the house and the inside of the house design can be anything I do not believe unless you're super rich and super aristocratic I do not think many people use the family crest nor in, in the house. It's kind of creepy, I'd say. But if you're like aristocratic family or if you're really rich, they could do that. But mainly that just, they didn't probably do sashiko much. They just used those fabric, indigo fabric, and with a little bit of dyeing, I guess. Almost done. But again, it can be anything. The design can be anything. 
Personally speaking, I like just Indigo Die. Period. No. No Shibori, no patterns from dying, just indigo blue. If I were living in Japan and if I had those Japanese traditional house, I just would use just indigo dye color. Probably not with Sashiko neither. I just like the indigo color. Sashiko might be too much for that. Ah. Oops. All right, I'll finish within 15 minutes or so. I believe I can do longer sometimes after the workshop in New York, I hope, but um, it's still cold, <laughs> the cold is pretty bad here, I mean, cold weather, I don't like it, so it's still cold and I gotta do something, I gotta, I gotta update my website and stuff like that, so I will do like one hour, one hour or hour and a half live streaming every Wednesday at 2 p.m. in Eastern time, New York time. And um, probably after the spring, like summer, I hope I can do a little longer than that. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I plan to do the one project in front of the camera. So showing the whole process is probably a good idea. Um, I do actually have a video showing the whole process of doing this. On the Sashiko Fukim, but it is in Japanese and it's probably nice to show the everything for all the process in English too. So I'll I plan to do that in the future. And online workshop is coming too, which is taking extra long to complete. But um, after civil workshop, um, after two actually not a civil two online. Um, workshop online teaching I learned a lot that I should improve some of the things which is more which is mainly the camera work Oops. so I'll do so Oh, that's a really good question. Just a second, okay. <laughs> oh. Today, I guess... Traditionally speaking, right? Traditionally speaking, I would say that no women had such a thing as right to make a decision. Traditionally speaking, I believe that they didn't have any um, any freedom to make a decision. 
So for that purpose, I guess they decided to, I mean, the men decided how it should be. I am not a big researcher on that. I have not researched about the fashion or the home decoration in Edo period when samurai was around. So I'm, I'm not a good person to answer the question, but for the answer to the question of does the Japanese wife decorate the house or does the husband make the decoration decision too? I think traditionally speaking, the Japanese decoration were made by men. I do not believe that women had those choices. Right now, I think women decide everything. At least in my house, I decide the very little things. And I'm happy with it. Yay. Yeah, um, the question is, so the husband would decide the wall curtain design? I think so, yeah. I, I think they would. The husband is dead. If they decided to hire somebody to do so, if they are rich enough to hire somebody to do so, yep, they probably, the husband would have decided the design. If they're not well enough to hire somebody, to do so, probably women like women decided what they wanted to do, because husband would say just make the carton, or make the noen, and then women think they're whatever they can do. So uh, most of the families are poor back in those days in Japan, so I guess I don't think the husband kind of step into the actual design of noen. Of course, they probably decided the basic concept, like what kind of patterns, what kind of fabric, stuff like that. But as long as I know there was no such a thing as questioning to the husband, was questioning to the man in those area, those era. So if they say so, that's the answer. That's the, that's the. That's the way it is. It was pretty strict. I mean, it's not... It was not a fair society back then.
Okay, I am finishing soon, very soon. If you have any questions, please leave the comments so I will follow up next week. If you have no questions, I will probably do just the same stitching next week too. Uh, it's going to be next Wednesday at 2 p.m. in Eastern Time, which is about, I would say, 8 p.m. in European Time, according to the Coco. Thank you, have a nice day, have a good night over there. I will finish this much thread and that's it. <laughs> I mean, nobody's stopping me, but just I need to do some housework, house chores. So. Thank you for watching, Coco. When I travel the thread from one line to another, do I reverse stitch in Kasane? Depends on the project. Um, in in my this this jeans no, because I do not plan to show the backside of the fabric. If I have to show the backside of the fabric like the one I showed you, King, yes, you have to make Kasane. It really depends on the project. If you want to show it outside, if you want to show the inside, then yes, you gotta make all the kasane possible. Then move. That's a lot of work. That's like triple work. So I try to avoid that if it's not necessary. One more line, that's it. Good job. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll show that front and back. I didn't do much today, so it's just the another lines. It's pretty much the same, but here we go. Thank you so much for watching today. This is the back side of the jeans. And today I worked on here. I worked on this part. Yes, Susie, I got an email and I think I replied. I believe I replied to you. And this is the front side of the jeans. Woohoo, it's getting better and better. This is the part I walked on today. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.
um, questions, anything is, I mean, welcome, so I can talk about it next time. Thank you, have a good week. Bye-bye.